Welcome to Talking Beards, an entertainment news podcast all about the facial hair lifestyle and the people who use their beards and mustaches to help change the world. Join your hosts, World Goatee Champion Aaron D. Johnston and two-time National Goatee Champion Scott Sakura as they talk about all the important issues in the community from charity events, competition news, styling tips, breaking news, and much more. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we stream live on all social media platforms as well as TalkingBeards.com and answer all of your questions. Join in our chat room and be a part of the show each week as we give away great prizes, compliments of Honest Amish. I am your host, Aaron D. Johnston, and I am Scott Sakura, and we are Talking Beards. Tonight, from the Beard Mob Indiana group, uh, we have Mr. Ron Rice to come on to talk about Bearded Theater that will be happening August 12th at the Crump Theater, the historic Crump Theater in Columbus, Indiana. Mr. Ron Rice, how are you doing tonight, sir? Evening, gentlemen. How are you? Fantastic. Better now that you're here. Yeah. I, this is normally it. where I say fun day Monday, but it's Tuesday. Hey, you you do your thing. So yeah, <laughs> tell tell everybody you know who you are, and and we'll we'll dive into this thing. Well, uh, Ron Rice, known as Old Red, um, president of Beard Mob East Region. Um, I'm going a little over three years now in the bearding community, nice, and. Nice. Uh, Home chapter is Beard Mob Indiana, and that's what we're here to talk about. A little bearded theater action, August twelfth at the Crump bearded. Theater. Oh my gosh! So, what's your what's your relationship with the Crump Theater? Is this a place that you you've frequented over the years or anything? Does it have like deep meaning in your life, or is it just the theater in town? Well, it sat empty for uh, quite some time because it was in such disrepair. Um, and they would do some like little local underground punk shows and stuff when I was younger there. And so I remember going to a few of those shows there when I was you know, skateboarding teenager. And uh, yeah, so it's been a staple in the community for, well, since 1871. So ahead, this staple yeah. is underground? Staples? You have staples underground? Underground staples. Wow. There for actually is your- no- Paper Un- under the Trump theater that go under the road because there used to be a hotel on the other side. So there actually is an underground scene there. And that's where the punks, punks played there. They yeah, played in the tunnel. Can, can we access the tunnels? No, it's partially collapsed and they don't really like people playing in there. I've been in the entrance way. And Could you do theater down there, there instead of playing? Well, that's where the play. punk rock shows were, Scott. Oh. Catch up. He said it was trying movie. to kill all the punks. Underground underground under the crump theaters where the punks used to play and then they broke the ceiling down with staples with staples come on now pay attention to ron rice when he's talking to you scott scora andrew madsen <laughs> wants to know if you ever saw eve six lfo or vertical horizon at the crump theater i did not gosh oh. andrew no madsen summertime. did yeah no summertime madsen. girls by lfo can't go wrong that's Scott's jam. That's that's what not. he listens to on on his headphones for the show, uh, and it gets Aaron him all stopped up. Gets him <laughs> he jacked loves up. LFO. Anyway, so just you know, so it's it's been in town and it's been in disrepair, and they're they're restoring it currently. That's that's the yes, yeah. Um, so the theater was built in 1871 and started as an opera house, um, and then in the 20s it kind of transferred to silent film, and then then of course to real film, and then digital movies in the nineties. Um, and like I said, it was in pretty bad disrepair. Um, they couldn't, they lost their permit and stuff. So they're doing a preservation, not a restoration. So they're trying to do different areas of the theater in different eras of the theaters past. Oh, that's a really interesting idea. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, as I was looking, uh, at, cause I, as I was making the artwork for the show and I wanted to, to have, uh, I don't know if anyone caught this, but just to show everyone real quick, um, when I did this picture here, I wanted to find like a really cool, like vintage looking picture of the theater. And so I was going through like all the pictures of the theater and it was showing like all these like super old pictures, like black and white pictures of the theater from, you know, obviously decades ago and, and just like, the dilapidation of the theater over the years and and how it looks now and some of the different things. 
Uh, but yeah, dude, it is a beautiful venue and that is so awesome that, you know, they're, they're trying to bring it up to date, but still keep the, the historic aesthetic to like it. And also because I know probably over the decades, each, you know, through era and stuff like that, they would kind of change the aesthetic of the inside. So to, to be able to like have one room be like, say the 1940s representing, and then another room representing the sixties and then maybe, you know, a different area. Like, and I think that's a really, really interesting and, and cool idea for a restoration of a venue like that. Do you know what the end result for this facility will be, Ron? Is it just going to be an event place or a museum or what's their end goal? It will be an event center. Um, it's coming back to the community as an event center. You have concerts, uh, dance, theater, beard competitions. Obviously. You know, the most like important that. thing that it's getting is this beard competition. Yeah. Circus what, performers, uh, all kinds of stuff. Do you know the how many how many seats this place holds? Ish. I believe it's 280 on the ground floor, and I can't tell you what the balcony is because it's still closed. The balcony okay. is still closed. But my question is, how many seats does this place hold if you stack them on top of each other? Oh, a tremendous amount. The ceilings like are like hundreds of thousands of seats, maybe. 100,000 seats is pretty good. Wow, that's a big venue. A I've giant. actually been up in the catwalk, and it's 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 scary up there. It's, it's, it's high. Especially you know, on the shady old ladders from like the 30s, you got to climb. They're like wooden. Yeah, dude, I can't. Wow. I can't believe you you climbed up on all that crap up there. You're you're a brave man. Well, like the first six hours I volunteered there, it was just urban exploration. There's so many like dressing rooms in the basement are still there with all the bulbs around them. I mean, just so much history, so many layers. It tell us about cool. tell us about that. What did what all did you do in the the six hours that you you volunteered there? Were you just <laughs> just wandered for those six hours mainly but, you know, uh, beers mob indiana has went and volunteered a couple times with the club uh, done everything from cleaning the upholstery on the chairs to tearing out a little drywall and uh me and me and stash actually cut the old boiler out we had demo saws in there throwing sparks and cut pipe and wow old yes, boiler sir. removed so they're like, if y'all are going to use this place you have to do all this manual labor before you can use it <laughs> that's fair I mean, no, no, we, we really enjoy going and helping out over there and, you know, and just, get, it's a pleasure for us to be able to go and especially our local people, because, you know, it's been years since we've been able to be in there. Right. And then to go in there and put some sweat equity into something that's going to be in the community. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So this is a newer, newer journey of the Crump theater coming back to life or what? Yeah. It's been uh, being for about the last three years, this current project manager and owners had it. So. So breaking news, did I just hear that correct? The new version of the band Journey is going to be playing the Crump Theater. <laughs> you you heard incorrectly, I'm pretty sure. Oh. I'm pretty sure that was wrong. That was incorrect information. Oh, Doc oh. Wilson might come sing some Journey for us. Okay. He will in his underwear. Oh. Did, did, were you the you weren't there? Were you there at the, the competition that, that uh Chris Wilson walked out in his underwear? I was not, but I've heard several accounts of the story. It was it's such an amazing, amazing time. That was that was probably one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me in my whole life. And then, you know, I was like, I'm gonna be friends with this guy. There was and that was it. <laughs> Once you see a man in his underwear, you kinda gotta be friends. Right. Mortal enemy is one of the two. That's it. You gotta be you gotta be friends after that. So bearded theater. Let's hear about this thing. You're uh so you're, you're, we're going to be using the, the big stage and we're going to have all kinds of seats that people can actually on use? The, on the big stage. So uh, we've got a lot of activities lined up and things going on. It's a 12-category competition. So okay. much room for activities. So much room for activities. And big chairs activities. back on top of each other. Mm, I don't know about that. No. Oh. <laughs> but... So we're going to have, uh, during our registration period, Jared the Juggler, the circus performer. He does the unicycling and the juggling and the hat tricks and everything. He'll be on the main stage performing uh, for everyone's enjoyment. So you want to show up early and not miss Jared the Juggler. Okay. We have a local brewery that's going to be serving some uh, local beers at the venue. Is that that going to be the Will that be the only alcohol at the venue? Is that local brewery or does the venue yeah. itself have like a bar or something? 
No, they, they're not set up with all that yet. Okay. <laughs> they don't have a bar license and everything. That's why we're bringing an outside vendor in to serve. I assumed. I was just curious. Yeah. Yep, and then there'll be pizza for sale by the slice because you know if you're drinking, you gotta have something on your belly. Even if you're not yeah. drinking, you get hungry. You, you know, also like, have to eat food if you don't drink alcohol. It's a little known fact. It's, yep, it's the it's fuel the that keeps body better. moving. It's the fuel, body fuel. <clears throat> but you can't go wrong with pizza, so we'll have some pizza there. Um, there will be an ice cream truck there as well. So will the the ice cream truck be there the the entirety of the event, or is it just gonna stop by for a little bit? going to stop by uh i told you i think he's going to be there at four until like six i think a couple hour window there okay. that's Everybody's pretty good in, get some ice cream and- there's this old saying about ice cream that i used to tell aaron when we were little kids i'd be like you scream and then i scream and then aaron and i will scream for ice cream yep every time such memories i know that was we were just little tight well continue just, just little fellers um, kid friendly event. So bring your youngins. There's plenty of room. Um, mm-hmm. we're going to have a kid's activity table with some coloring sheets and some s- stickers and some stick on mustaches and stuff and whatever fun stuff Miss Meg's got planned. I'm sure she's got a big thing planned that I have no clue about, but well, there will be an activity table. Can't say that to make donuts and, and they, or beards. There will not be donuts, no but donuts. there is a really good local donut shop. If you stay in town, there you go. So with the the kids activity table, well, you said that there'll be like little mustaches and stuff. So mm-hmm. if you bring your kid and they don't have, you know, if they want to compete once they're there, there there is the opportunity for them to at least put on some sort of mustache or something, and and then they can go go do their thing. Yeah, we did that last year at uh, Bearded Olympics, and it worked out really good. We had like I think three people participate that came oh, in God. that way. So, and it was, yeah, they, they just came and then they decided there that they were going to put something yeah. together. Well, so cool. then, I, like, I like that. So then I am to assume that there's going to be a kids category at this event then. Yes. Yes. Definitely have a kids category. Uh, love, to there, see it. love to see a huge lineup of children. So is it like, just strictly it, it, for kids it, though, or can adults partake in this too? Um, I think it's just kids. All right. So there's the, the kids it's category. Based on physical age, not mentality. Ah, good. So there'll be the the adults would be in the the more whiskerina category. So they'll they'll be split. It won't be a whiskerina slash kids category. Nope, nope. Sixteen. Um, Sixteen is the cutoff for a kids category. Okay. If you're over sixteen, you're a whiskerina or girl beard. So as, as we're talking about categories right now, uh, about how many categories do you have? And is there any type other than your kids creative category? Is there any other like unique or specialty categories that you are having for this event? No, we just got a standard, uh, you know, 12 category lineup, uh, with the kids category in there. Uh, we do have a best in show. And I'm not going to unveil the best in show trophy, but I'm saying you want to win best in show. So bring your best show attire and be the best in the show because you want are, the prize. Are you going to show this best in show trophy off before the event on the event page or anything? Or are you just keeping it a secret till the day of? But we're holding it. We're holding Uh-oh, it. there you go. It's yeah. it's good enough that they don't even want to show it to you. That's how nope. good it is. Do you, It'd be uh, on stage with a spotlight on it when you walk in. It's going to be great. What, what about regular trophies for all the other categories? Do you do you have those all lined out? Yes, sir. We got uh, first place trophies, second place trophies, and third place trophies. Can, can you tell us what those are? Or are they top secret too? I won't tell you what the first place are, but the second and third place are hand scroll sold plaques from a local disabled veteran here in town, Andy Spicer. He volunteered his time to make them, um, and th- they're beautiful. Definitely something to hang on your wall. And those are second and third? Second, third. What was what's first? I ain't telling. Oh, but you you did, you told us second, third. You, you can go ahead and tell us first. No one's even watching. What what's first place? First is a a prize. You want a prize? Oh my first. gosh, this is amazing. A prize. I bet you'll. I bet they'll get some honest homage. Probably. Probably. There you go. See, that's that's pretty good. That's all you oh. need. They're firing up the popcorn machine from the 50s, too. It's all this big stainless with the glass, curved glass in it. It's going to be sweet. Will we be able to buy popcorn? Are they like... You will be able to place a donation for popcorn. 
Nice. I like that. As well as a donation for beers and a donation for pizza. Smart. So that's so it's all donation based. So yeah. you, you know, you're not selling things. It's all donation. So it makes it all the better for charity. So absolutely that's what it's all about. So speaking of charity, what who are we what all are we raising money for this weekend? Well, our primary charity will be go to the Crump Theater, the preservation of the Crump. Um, they have a non-for-profit group that, you know, collects funds for help with the preservation and the needs of the Crump Theater, getting it restored and keeping it operational. Um, secondly, at the tickets booth, yes, we get to use the ticket booth. Um, when you pay your entry fee, which it would be $10 at the door, spectators and competitors, competitors will be 10 more dollars at registration. So 20 bucks, if you want to compete, $10 as a spectator. It's but 10 bucks to get in. Period. 10 bucks. Yep. And, uh, but the other option is if you got some warm weather items, some gloves, some hats, some socks, some gently used or new coats, uh, we're collecting those items to do a little outreach this fall for, you know, homeless and keep them Very warm. Great. So we so have some sort of collection box or something like that for people yep. to put stuff in. Sweet. Yep. It'll be by the door when you go in. And you'll get your wristband. You'll go in. I'll have it divided. You get your. They'll have a photographer doing some headshots. Get everybody all registered, and then everybody be in the theater watching Jared the Juggler eating ice cream cones. My, my day. Th- I know this is like real off the cuff, you know, because I'm that kind of guy. But I'm. I'm. This is an idea that just kind of it stirred in my head because I know it's something I've done before at other events and. I haven't seen too many people do this because they don't do that uh, additional like gathering, like what you just were talking about where like you're bringing things, but um, I'm assuming you guys are going to be having a raffle, correct? Correct. So what if you offered to people who bring in items for each item they bring in, they get a bonus ticket to enter into raffle. So you're incentivizing people to bring more things like, canned goods if you're collecting those or if they're bringing uh some clothes you know you can give them one extra ticket that they get to use for raffles so you know it j- that's just I'm, I'm throwing an idea out there not a bad know, idea not no, that's a wonderful idea yeah i have one hang up though we've switched to the the, the raffle cards oh it's so much easier but it, dude, those it, raffle cards are amazing yeah yeah yeah, you know, going a string of tickets this long and checking numbers. It's, it's I, not I love enough. the cards so much more because all you get, you know, if you only buy one card, then you only got to kind of you, you got that one number and you just go through the whole. I like it that yeah. everybody yeah, should I, switch to those cards for sure. I agree. It it <laughs> makes everything easier for user and promoter. <laughs> yeah, it does. But I mean. That was just an idea I threw out there. I mean, because I know, I mean, as we've had a couple people in here say it's a great idea. So if someone else is doing like an event and, you know, they want to do like a little side like thing where they're collecting cans for the homeless people or a a food kitchen or something, you know, just uh, every person that brings in an extra can or something is give them an extra ticket that goes in the thing. It it incentivizes them to to bring things. Yeah. <clears throat> or how about this is a good one? It how about for every one. five items they bring, one free throat punch to scoot? That's pretty good. I got at least five or ten things I could bring for sure. <laughs> See, hey, uh, Megan Rice, it, it would have to be for the 50 50. There, maybe you could do that, there not the go. raffle. Megan Rice coming in with the with the the assist. She Brad, always got the idea. She's the like idea 50, generator, really. Like Brad 50, thinks 50, this is a horrible idea. I don't know if Brad it's that it. or the the five items in a one free throat punch on me. No, he was definitely just talking about just at all. Like no. Oh. So for the throat tickets. punch, do you move the or, or do we got to go through it? No, because it kind of protects it. Okay, that makes so sense. you're not moving the beard. So we're actually no. punching your beard. Yeah. Okay, beard punch. Nice, nice. Beard punch. That's still pretty good. Yeah, I got I to have a little cushion. A little cushion. I don't want to lose cushion. my voice, so I can't talk on the show. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be bad. All right, so we got this event. Uh, you you're gonna have all these categories. You got some charities. Uh, we got ice cream. 
We'll we'll take ice cream instead of donuts this one time, Ron Rice. One uh, time ice cream will be all right. I'll make sure I'll take a lactate pill so I can eat it. It'll be perfectly and fine. I can steer you. I can steer you towards donuts. That's no problem. Is it within walking distance of the Crump Theater? No. Anything okay. is in walking distance. If you put your mind to it, it is. But <laughs> within reason, walking distance. It would take you. It would be a good long walk. I have no interest in taking a good long walk Me unless either. I have to. And I have an For automobile donuts. so I can drive to donuts. <laughs> the only really good reason for me to take a good long walk is if like my car breaks down, I'm stuck somewhere, but then still you can like call an Uber. So you still don't even have to walk. So, you, you anyway. know, I did just think that donut shop does have a donut truck. Mm. I mean, yeah, you got some time, man. If you can, you can make this happen. I will, I will gladly eat donuts and ice cream ice cream on the donut Less on the pizza 26.2 miles is a crisp jog guys Shut always remember man. that i don't even like driving that far <clears throat> so ron rice who, who are who are your judges for this event do you have any any of those that that are going to be yeah. judging all this facial hair goodness i think we have a great judging panel this year um First off, Mr. Phil Jones is going to be the MC of the event. Wow. Yes. And with the Mr. Phil Jones is the ever so lovely Sandy Jones, who will be one of our judges for this event. There, there you go. The the duo, the the MC and judge number one. The the Joneses. I like it. Yes. <clears throat> double, we're double Jones. Double Jones. You're really Jones for this event. And, and who knows, Jim Jones may show up as Maybe well. And, and Angie, triple, quadruple Jones. That's too many Joneses in one place for sure. Right. For sure. Like a family reunion beard comp. I think that's why. I think that's why um, Jim Jones wasn't allowed to come to Jasper last weekend because there would have been too many of them in one spot. Andrew so. Matson declares he's never heard of them. Are they new? Where are they from? What have they been involved before in any bearding events? And Jeff Harris says they'll probably eat. All the ice cream. That's why you got an ice cream truck. Because I had to get to be there. <laughs> Bribery. Uh oh. Angie will be there. You can never have never too many Joneses. Many. It's all can. about knowing the Joneses. <laughs> all right. So we got the first two out of the way. We got an MC and one judge. Is uh, what else have we got up on your stage? Well, we have a returning judge this year. Mr. Okay. Joker, Harry Flanagan, will be back in all of his beautiful glory. Does he not look like the Bearded Theater logo, kind of? He looks exactly like the Bearded Theater logo, for sure. Was that on Except purpose? That he doesn't look like he's choking on anything and can't breathe. Well, you know, what if he accidentally swallowed his big red nose? Maybe he did. Then he Maybe would probably right cry and turn blue nose. like that. Absolutely. But no, it was a, it was it was a fluke. Johnny designed that logo before we announced judges. So, so, so what 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 was your last beard competition? It wasn't bearded theater, was it? No, it was bearded Olympics to benefit okay. the Special Olympics. When was that? That was August sixth of last year. Okay, we moved it up a weekend this year because of uh, beards on the rocks in St. Louis. So we didn't want to. Didn't want to impede, so we moved to the second weekend in August this That's year. That's what it was. We were in Spokane last year. Yep. <clears throat> so another judge, I'm super excited. He's going to drive a little further than 26.5 or whatever what Matson said, 26-something miles. He's coming all the way up from the good state of Texas, Mr. Shannon Clickenbeard. World champion chicken bread. Hey, bringing some world champions in. Come on, look at you. <laughs> Such a such a fine whaler on that on that gentleman right there. That is best Look in the, the world fluff. for sure. I, I I cannot disagree with that. It's a whole lot of fluff. Whole lot of fluff. Stick whole lot of fluff. Fluffy. And Who then we got? got we got the new mama, Miss Amber Cook from Tri County Beard Mustache Club. She's going to be joining us for this event. Heck yeah. She is an absolute delight. It has been years since I've seen her and her uh, lovely man. Yes. The, there's, there she is. There's a picture wonderful. of her. You, you should just come to Bearded Theater, Scott Sakura. Yeah. Absolutely. She'll be there. 
I have to work. It's right up the road. You don't. You, you'll be fine. I can hitch a ride with Shannon. There you go. Just ride with Shannon. There you Just go. Like thumb in the wind, and he'll pick you up and right. Put up me there. in the horse trailer. Or the, sorry, put me in the cow trailer in the back and be like, "Get back there, Scott." And yeah, he he pretty well always has that cow trailer everywhere he goes. He definitely doesn't unhook it. He just leaves it connected to his truck and just you never picks know up cows. when you're gonna need to pick a heifer up. Yeah, man. There may just be a cow next to the road, and you're like, you know what? You're gonna look good in my field. So like, I'm gonna make, it a, make it into a bearded theater caravan. You can just bring all the Texas people, and as he comes up through, just picking people up, just all open the trailer doors. There it is. Bearded that would people. be a wild ass ride riding in a, a cow trailer from Texas to Indiana. Holy shit! <laughs> the USS Whaler carrier. That's what he should put on the side of it. <laughs> We'll have to get uh, Beard Mob Indiana neck braces to hand out to everybody when they get there. For sure. <laughs> It'll be worth it, though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely sure. going to make it worth it. And then our final judge of our five-judge panel is Mr. Jason Berger from Bearded Villains, Ohio. Heck, yeah. Very nice. He's got a nice mustache. He does. And he's got a very fluffy beard, too. He's one of those, got all the volume. I like the fact that his beard is white and his mustache is black. I like that nice Congrats. delineation. Or what about this one? No mustache. <laughs> his Skin split off. Mustache. Oh man. So what what else do we got going on with this event? You do you have a, a pre party for Friday night or a Sunday event or anything like that? We are going to do a pre-party uh, Friday night. We are working with the host of the Eagles there to try to lock something down. Pretty sure it's going to happen. Don um, Henley? <laughs> no, the local fraternal order of Eagles. Oh, my God. Don Henley would be cool. That's like Joe Walsh, Don Henley? Uh, wow, that's good. Okay. Hey, I pulled some big names, but I, I, I couldn't get you know rock stars. And the F-O-E. F-O-E. So, yeah, we're trying to finish nailing that down, but uh, it's pretty sure it's going to happen. The There is a host hotel. It's actually where the competition was held last year, and we filled their convention center to the point we were over capacity, so that's why oh, we wow. moved this year. One of Good the for y'all. So, um, but anyway, they did a block of rooms. Unfortunately, the room block uh, has canceled. It canceled on the 11th, but there's still rooms available. You just have there to pay is. $2 more than the discounted rate. Um, literally the hotel is w one block from the Eagles from the Eagles. It's one block to the, to the venue. So everything's pretty centrally located except the donut shop, except, except the, donut shop. the donuts, but they have a donut truck, Scott Sakura. Yes. Yeah, so they could truck. park it and everything could be one block from each other. Oh my gosh. Park ice cream on one block and donuts on another block. By the time he walked around. Yeah. That's too much walking. Greatest competition ever, Scott Sakura. Wow, is, this does sound like really lining stopping. up to be a, an amazing event with a the donut, donut truck, truck and, and then stop the ice cream truck with the scoop of vanilla ice cream on your donut. And then and then go watch the Eagles. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> it's, um, how much more American can this be? It sounds pretty American. We were plainly told no pyrotechnics, though. Well, ah. I mean, at least they told you. Yeah. Man. <clears throat> I had did all they, these, did I they had give all you any more? Planned out and couldn't do it. They give you all any more rules and regulations other than no pyrotechnics? Not really. We've okay. developed yeah. a pretty good relationship um, with Jess, the project manager over the whole Crump Theater. And she's like, I was like, what time do we need to be out of there? And she's like, if I get tired, I'll throw you the keys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so no end. We, yeah, we're so, at the Crump Theater until we are ready to leave. We're going to party like it's 1871, do some silent opera and have a good time. Oh, I like this, man. I'm, so, I'm so excited about being in this theater. This what is always a no no glitter everywhere. No confetti, no glitter, please. Oh, please. yeah. It'd be impossible, it get out of those, be impossible to get out of those wood floors. Holy crap. That'd be bad. So we'll just say no glitter, too, for sure. No glitter. Did you say I snore? Yeah. Oh, you do. Have you ever heard yourself? Since I quit drinking, guess what? I don't do anymore. You don't snore. <laughs> mm. I've tested this theory. You're a bore too. I don't go around spreading rumors about you. Oh, sorry. 
My bad. Jeez. <laughs> so uh, no, no Sunday send off lunch, brunch, breakfast. No, I, I personally have to move my child into Purdue University Sunday morning, bright and early. Okay. So, so you're out. Yeah, yeah. She, she got scheduled. It was the 12th, 13th, and 14th was the move-in days for freshmen. And so we missed the 12th, which is the comp day, but we got the 13th at 9 a.m. So she sent an email and got it moved to 11. So at least we don't have to be at Purdue till 11. So how far is Purdue from where y'all are? Two hours. Oh, that's not too bad. So I ain't got to get up real early, but nine o'clock would have sucked. Yeah. So I know we had discussed real briefly earlier about the uh, raffle cards. So yeah. um what about do you what about the raffle? Let's talk a little bit about the raffle. Like so we're going to have a couple raffle tables. Uh I've reached out to some people that are bringing some baskets and baskets normally show up as well. Um we've had some local donations of some items from uh local vendors and stores around town and some restaurants, some really good restaurants. Um and then we're going to have we definitely have a few nice auction items this year. So be ready to have your wallets emptied because the auction items are going to be awesome how's your uh, how's the auction going to work you going to do it at intermission or something or what are you going to do we probably will do the auction at intermission because we have something special planned between the final category and awards announcements okay can, can you you tell us about that or is it top secret as well oh no it's not top secret it's okay. the shade for prostate that i have uh been working on it was a ideal i had after i lost my grandfather to prostate cancer and then several other people had you know reached out to me and it's been an issue in their family and so i decided i wanted to do something so i came up with uh schaefer prostate i threw a number out there four thousand dollars i would go chops well time of people joined in so we done that so between the last category and the while the Totals are being calculated before trophies. My personal barber will be there to do a little shaving. I think Harry just piped up there. He's shaving his head and his mustache. Okay. Wow. So, and you're just going to shave into chops? Yep. Going straight to chops. Well, it was nice knowing you. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> at least you got on the show twice before you shaved yeah. chops. That's pretty good. I mean, hopefully Andrew can do the show next time because, you know, you're going to have chops. So, he won't have <laughs> he won't he'll have mustache mustaches are fine but mm -hmm. there's only i think there's only been one chops person on this show ever <laughs> chop squad don't get much publicity as they shouldn't really <laughs> <laughs> we love the chops I'm people. still waiting you, for you, a you, talking you, chops show or a talking whaler show right talking whaler chops no no, no, Nico, you can't no, get in the chops, la the chops lap. <laughs> Scott's lap. Sorry, we wanted to know if the dog was fed. <laughs> well, what did Nico say? Did he eat? He, he always is not fed. Oh, mine are well fed, but they act like they're not. I have a cat like that. He uh, always acts hungry, but he always eats. So, freaking animals, you know, Critters. liars. They're <clears throat> liars. So you're going to be chops at the end of this event. At the and end of the event, I will be chops. Oh, Andrew, Andrew Orton's got a good question. Can you do multiple categories? Yes, you may do multiple categories. There you Is go. Is that an extra category, fee? Additional categories are $10. Cool. Just keep keeping whole numbers. <laughs> there you go, man. I like it. Don't don't make it like 375 or something like that. That's that gets really confusing really quick. But does it? Yeah, it does. 10, 10, and 10. 10 to get in the door, 10 to register, and 10 for an additional category. Andrew Orton says, Ron will be. LOL. Yeah, but if you use promo code Talking Beards, you'll get 15% off. So what is that? That ends up being $3. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, I don't think it worked in, in, at live events. The oh. promo code doesn't work. It also doesn't work at Walgreens. Did you oh. know that we sell our products in 3,000 Walgreens stores? I've seen that. You can't you can't use talking beards promo code. It doesn't work. Andrew tried it. They they yeah eight fifty. <laughs> oh man, my bad. It's See, all right. I knew someone was going to correct me. That's what Andrew said. He uh and he's well, the mathematician, so he knows. 
we're, we're raising money for charity. Eighteen fifty, not eight fifty. Eight, there you go, eighteen fifty. But no, we're gonna have a good time, man. We got some entertainment planned. We got some stuff to munch on, some fun stuff. Uh, the ice cream truck is a mutual friend that's been in the community for a long time. She's uh, disabled, but didn't want to be disabled, so she came up with this ice cream truck. Actually, Tony Stewart helped her build this ice cream truck. So um, it's super. It's a fast ice cream truck. Ah, uh, man. Uh, can't Tony be too Stewart bad calling all that ice cream. I mean, Tony Stewart built it, so it's fast. Got to be fast. Got to be but, fast. So that'll be fun. And then uh, we've got an awesome panel of judges. I hope to see everyone there. Great prizes. Just, you know, I told you about second, third, but you still don't know first and best. Oh, yeah, what's show. first place? You you were going to tell us, you said. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's it's a trophy. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> I like trophies, so that's that's good. <laughs> So to stress on this, it is a family event. What time are people supposed to be getting there? Um, four o'clock, we're going to open the doors um, and then run registration till 530. There'll be a 30-minute lapse uh, between 530 and 6, and then we'll start promptly at 6 o'clock. So there's Which, a pool, and people are going to be swimming, and they're timed on their laps? I'm confused. No, no they took the pool out. Oh, um, it was in the basement. Gone. It was underground. It yeah, was underground right. with the tunnel. With sta- too many staples in it. People swimming laps, getting staples in their. All the water just went right out the tunnel. Enough said. Enough said. No pool. Well, thank you, Ron Rice. You're very We welcome. appreciate you. This was uh, very informative and, and sounds like this is going to be an amazing event. You've, you've got ice cream and jugglers and a theater and kids and popcorn. What else can you have? This, this is amazing, man. And, and the venue, man. The venue really makes it. I think everyone's really going to enjoy seeing the inside of the place. Mm-hmm. Um, I know one thing we're really looking forward to is seeing our names on the marquee. Dude, that's uh, awesome, man. I'm, yeah. I'm so excited to be there. I'm, I'm excited to see everything that y'all have done with this place and, and the way you're going to put it all together and build this bearded theater up and be the, the biggest, best bearded theater event to ever be in a theater that's bearded. I think it's bearded theater. Oh, I should hang like a beard from the marquee. It's bearded theater. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Gentlemen, thank you for having me on. Thank you for letting me talk about bearded theater and uh, let me plug Schaefer prostate there. It's still going on. So hit me up if you'd like to donate to that as well. There you go. Hit up old red Ron rice on Facebook messenger and all that good stuff. And he'll, he'll get you all squared away and you can donate to him shaving into chops for prostate cancer. Yes, sir. Men's health. That's it, man. All right. Thank you, Ron. Yep. Everybody have a great night. Yep. Have a great night. Everybody, check out Bearded Theater, August 12th, Columbus, Indiana, the Crump Theater. Sounds like it's going to be an amazing event. It's it uh, does. got tons of food and jugglers and just all kinds of stuff going on. It's going to go in from six o'clock to question mark because Ron Rice has the keys to the venue. If the, the, owner wants to leave we're just gonna close it ourselves imagine if there was a bowling alley in the basement it might be in the basement who knows we're gonna go down there I, you're I'm not gonna, allowed aaron he already I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out to get down there we'll find the bowling alley and the pool and the staples <laughs> <laughs> man we uh we pretty well went to the end what else we got oh we got something else we we're gonna talk about real quick where'd it go where'd, where'd it go, go where'd it go Oh, tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. Um, tomorrow night Network. on the Talking Beards Network. I have this other thing that I'm going to show. Once I something find it. about reading to did something. Did I not put it in here? That gummit. I don't think that I. I don't. You did not do it. So I made it. So, uh, yeah, Panda Bread and uh, our friend Mr. Panda Buffon. Bread and Kitten Bread are going to be Panda. doing a show. Where they read to boobs. Apparently. Something like that. Something about boobing, reading boobs. I don't know. So yeah, tomorrow. Uh, it's not What Up Mob Wednesday, but it it it, it is a show with Buffon. So it's, it's going to be similar, but it's going to have chicken bread on it. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern, I'm pretty sure. They're, they're going to be on there. Check them out. New shirt. There you go. The kitten bread. No, no, I'm not gonna I'm not doing that one. That the whole panda bread one really was uh 
Yep, there it is. There it is. Not regular bread. Boob red. Boob red. Yes. Yeah, so because it's gonna, scary. They're going to read stories about boobs, I think. I think that's going to be the, the basis of this show. So if you like boobs and you like reading, this this is the show for you for sure. And I'm pretty sure Buffont can't doesn't even know how to read. So I don't know how this is going to work. Must be a picture book show. Well, that's why Shannon's going to be there to help. Shannon's going to read the story, and then Buffon will turn the page. That's what they're going. It's it sounds like a, a marvelous show. Um, yeah, check it out tomorrow night, right here. It's not it. We're we're not doing it. I don't want to upset those guys. We're gonna. I know we're just goofing around and everything, but yeah, please do check in. Yeah, for real, check out their show. You know we're we're kidding around. It's there. It is. It's. No, it's regular bread. Oh no, it's boo bread. You know, boo font and chicken bread. So their names are combined. Their show is going to be funny. I'm sure. Um, check it out. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be about. It's going to be those guys doing boo bread. They're going to be. Like they're going to be biting off and sucking biting heads and sucking tails, sucking bread. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna they're just gonna eat loaves of bread the whole gonna show. Fight. That's gonna be the entire show. They're just gonna eat a loaf of bread with Ron Rice. So <laughs> well, that's it. What else we got? Is that it? That's about it. I think that's it. We it will yeah. wrap it up. That's it. We're wrapping it up. So thank you everybody for watching. Uh thank you, Ron Rice, for stopping by and telling us all about your event. Uh yeah, I'm Aaron D. Johnston. You can check me out, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and threads. I had to think about that one because that's you know, that's important. Threads. Everybody's going to threads now. I don't know. Maybe. Um that's it. Check yeah. out the beer calendar and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I am Scott Sakura. You can find me on Instagram and uh, uh, Facebook. Look for the Beardcaster. Let's get that spinning back up again. That the Beardcaster, beard all also on Threads. Um, but yeah, uh, like we said at the beginning of the show, if you are interested, please go follow us on uh, the uh, where do we want us to? Where do, I had a hard time finding it. Subscribe over on. Uh, YouTube, we are trying to grow the YouTube page up. So we smash can that bell, smash that. Uh, even though it's uh already the end of July, there is uh, is there, what's the competition coming up? This is there anything this weekend or no? Uh, this upcoming weekend, you know, where you can find out by going Ooh. to the beardcalendar.com. That's going to tell you if there's any competitions coming up this weekend. There you go. I don't, I don't know. I, have, I think next weekend, maybe. I don't know. Last but not least, honestamish.com. When you're in there and you're making a big order, be sure to use the Talking Beards promo code. It'll get you 15% off. Um, we are happy to help you find some great things. Thank you, Ron, for showing up tonight. And we wish you gr great success on your event this weekend. And uh, it's not at, this weekend. It's oh, sorry. Like I know. It's <laughs> when it, when it, wait, what's the date? August, the get? August, August 12th, August, August 12th. 12th. Cause I know that uh, that question was asked. It says, Brad says, sounds like a fun event. When is it? August 12th, it's August 12th, Brad, check out the beer calendar for news and information. Yes. <clears throat> but that's it. Right. That's it. All right. Bread. Everybody. Breadcaster. Everybody have a great night, great weekend, and uh maybe I'll see you next week. I don't know. No Scott for sure, but no I don't Scott know. Maybe for sure. I'll make a decision Monday, probably. <laughs> and then I'll let y'all know who our guest is and if we're gonna have a show. So everybody have a great night and uh see you later. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Talking Beards. Make sure you go over to honestamish.com and use promo code TALKINGBEARDS to get 15% off your order. Don't forget to tune in live next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at TALKINGBEARDS.COM.